There's a place on earth, a place of destiny, a place of happiness, a place of peacefulness. You don't have to go too far, cause it's right here where you are, all you have to do. Is close your eyes, you'll see. Oh, it seems so strange, but soon you're gonna see. Many stars are bright, and that's not even at night. I close my eyes, shining stars come for me. I wish you come and see these shining stars with me. So close your eyes for a moment and stop what you're doing. Stop everything and don't even think. And put your mind at ease right in the center of of your body and that's it it's so easy first comes the light then comes the star that's super bright it's just stars for the stars mother stars father stars and even nephew stars they all come out for you to see and that's the door to your destiny there's a place on earth a place of destiny a place of happiness, a place of peacefulness. You don't have to go too far, cause it's right here where you are. All you have to do is close your eyes, you'll see. Uh, hi everyone and hello to all the shining stars out there. Welcome to our Shining Stars program hosted by Kids, kids Love, love Keys 20. 20. Hi everyone, I'm AB. I'm in second grade from Texas. Thank you and welcome to our weekly Shining Stars program. Warm greetings and welcome. I'm Hannah, a fifth grader from Chicago. And me, Thomas, a sixth grader from California. We would like to welcome you to one. We would like to welcome one and all to our weekly Monday evening streaming of Shining Stars program from six o'clock to six thirty p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook of Kids Love Peace Twenty. Together with Avery, Hannah, and I will be your hosts for this evening. Our Shining Stars program was designed to showcase the outstanding creative actions and positive thinking in kids like us in their everyday lives. Moments of joy will be shared, which will encourage children and adults to be better people. We get to review all the good deeds and actions done over the past week by children like us, so inspiration happens. We get to praise their achievements, which promote a happy mindset and a positive environment. We also include a 10-minute guided meditation at the end for the benefits of evening meditation lead to a great night's sleep and mental clarity to prepare you for the excitement of a new day. Parents and friends, help us spread the word around by either smashing the like or share button for Shining Stars to your friends. And leave us a comment at any time in the comment box or type over hi so we could see who's on for the evening. We appreciate your interactions. As Hannah said, Share your comments with us in the comment box you see just below your screen. Without further ado, Avery, what do we have for this evening? 
This evening, we have a curious question from our friend. The question is, how did each day get their name? Wow, Avery, that's interesting. How about you, Hannah? Have you ever known where the names of the days came from? No, I actually didn't know, but I guess they're related to something in space, like how one day is related to the Earth going around the sun once. And for this interesting question, this evening we invite Venerable Clint Kunachewo from the Meditation Center of Chicago to reveal this answer. Please welcome Venerable Clint. Namaskar. Namaskar. Hello, shining stars. It's always great to be here. And yes, what a wonderful and very interesting question you guys have today. So why exactly? How did each day get their name? Indeed, very interesting. So let's do some history. So way back then when people didn't have as much knowledge as we do now, you know, humans tended to worship gods and look out into the stars. So Hannah, you're right. We did look in the stars. And Something that we looked at was, well, there's so many things that are just we can't explain. So then they had a lot of wonderful and amazing gods. So if they already worship gods, they decided, hey, they see gods, they see stars. They noticed some of the stars were really interesting. They were always there. These stars are, well, nowadays we know that they are planets also. They're the sun, the moon, and then the five planets that they knew of at the time. So... If they were planets that they saw, they decided that, oh, that must be a god up there. So with each day, let's start with Sunday. Can you guess what what they were what what Sunday is for? <laughs> I already have the answer on top. So it's a day for the sun god. So of course, the thing of the sun. And in many, many different cultures and and uh, and traditions, they had their own form of their own sun god, as you can see here as there was definitely some wonderful power, this energy from the sun that is always keeping us with this light to be able to do what we do in the day. And then at night, when it's really dark, well, that's where Monday came in, from the moon goddess. So of course this is from, as you guessed it, the moon. So the moon goddess was this goddess who was always caring for us, taking care of us at night, giving us that light. So isn't that nice? A great idea, right? So that's where Monday came. So what about Tuesday? It was actually for a god named Tiu. <laughs> and you're like, Tiu, who's Tiu? Now, not only a god, so we think, as we know, it also came from a planet. So it came from this planet. Any guesses what planet this is? Mars. Yes, exactly, Hannah. It's Mars, the red planet, right? So what is Mars also known as? Well, Mars is actually the name of a god. That's why he got that name of the planet. And in this case, Tuesday was from a god named Tiu. So as you can see, the gods were all from different cultures, had the same god, but different names. So Tiu was also a god of war. Just like in Greek, we know Ares. As uh, Greek mythology has grown so much more well-known compared to Norse gods and Roman gods. So then, so that's Tuesday. Tuesday is for the god of war, Mars. So what about Wednesday? Wednesday was formerly known as Woden's Day. Woden was a god. So first, what planet do you think it was from? I'll give you a hint. I'm kind of blocking him. <laughs> it was Mercury. Mercury. <laughs> Thank you, Avery. So yeah, it was Mercury. And Woden was like the king of gods. And, and uh, in the Norse gods, we know him as Odin. <laughs> and you might recognize the picture because, yes, it's from Thor. It's Thor's dad. Thor's dad was Woden or Odin, uh, depending on the, the, the mythology that you're looking at. So from there, we go into Thursday. <laughs> You'll know this one for sure. It was also a day for Thor. And what planet do you think it was? His planet was Jupiter. So the Romans called it Jupiter. And... Jupiter was a god of thunder, as is Thor. So, so even as the as I mentioned before, they all had just different different names for their gods, but they actually had the exact same person. Isn't that interesting? So from there, how about Friday? 
Friday was for Freya. She was a goddess. And here's the planet. And he guesses what planet this is? Venus. Venus. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Thomas and, and, uh, and Hannah at the same time. So, yeah, Venus. Venus was the goddess of love. So back in history, that was the picture of Freya, also known as Frigg, Freyda. Oh, there's many names. And Venus, of course. So in the center, that's the Greek goddess. If you've seen Hercules, that's Aphrodite, the goddess of love. So you see there's many names for this the same god. Then we go into Saturday. So Saturday, what do you think? What planet do you think that would be? <laughs> it, it used to be called Saturn's Day. <laughs> so you probably guessed it. It was for Saturn. And Saturn, this god was very interesting. Uh, he had this thing that he thought he there was a prophecy that his kids were going to overthrow him. So he started. So he ended up kill, eating his kids. Weird, right? And in Greek mythology, it's this guy in the middle, or here, <laughs> this giant guy. Uh, as a yeah, he looks kind of like Thanos, although he's not. <laughs> Actually, this is Kronos. <laughs> Funny how the names are similar, right? But Kronos was a titan. So this is in Greek mythology. Kronos was a titan. He was like a giant, a giant for even gods. And he ate his children, who were the Greek gods, like Zeus, Poseidon, these guys. So that's who he ate. Just like in the Roman, uh, in the Roman mythology, so it's interesting how they all had that same kind of mythology, and in the end, they all had that same. That's how the days came, Saturday. But most importantly, though we did talk about seven days already, there's one day I want you to remember for sure. Okay, it's a very very important day. Don't ever forget it. Okay. It's Clint's day. It's for this awesome monk. <laughs> Now, what is so awesome and amazing about this? Now, this day is very important to me, for sure. Okay? It's the day that that he gets to teach you guys, share meditation with you all, lead meditation for adults, people all around the world. Not only that, he also has time where he gets to enjoy some delicious food. He has some time to play and have fun, but also have time for friends and hang out. So... What do I mean? Am I showing that Clint's Day is a day that everyone has to celebrate me? No, not quite. Actually, what I'm trying to say is, make every day your day. So just like how every day for me is Clint's Day, I do what I can to do to make me happy. Make sure that every day for you is a day for fun, enjoyment, enjoying some food, being happy, laughing. That way, every day you are living. You enjoy it. It's your day. It's, you know, it's Hannah Day. <laughs> it's Thomas Day. And then it's Avery Day every day, okay? <laughs> but not only do you have fun, make sure you, in order to enjoy your peace and fun, even more than that, to make sure you also have time for meditation. You don't have to meditate a lot, but a little bit every day can really go a long way. That way you can truly enjoy everything else on the screen. So make every day your day. Thank you, Venerable Clint, for giving us this knowledge. Friends joining us this evening, what is your favorite day? Why? Please share with us in the comment or chat box below. We are very excited to hear your comments. So Avery, what do you like the uh, which day do you like the most? Saturday is my favorite day because it's a weekend. I get to stay up later and sleep through the next day. My favorite day personally is Saturday because uh, on Friday you just got back from school and you're just really tired just from school and if you like Sunday then from at least for me I think of school the whole day because school is the next day which is Monday and I just don't like that feeling so I like Saturday because I'm always looking forward to Sunday which is another weekend I like I actually like Friday because um, 
on Friday, the next day is Saturday, so I could spend it on a weekend. But Friday, I still get to spend it with my friends in school, and I get to stay up late because the weekend is the next day. Uh, so thank you, Serene. Thank you, Serene. Thank you, Serene, for joining us this evening. Landon's favorite day is Friday because he says it's when he gets his allowance, which is really exciting. And, uh, yeah. And now to our guided meditation. Venerable Clint leads us tonight. Namaskar and Kai. Okay. Yeah, that's great, everyone. Yeah, when I was a kid, Saturday was also my favorite. Although when I was a kid, Saturday morning was full of cartoons. <laughs> and we didn't have cable back then yet. Or at least I didn't. <laughs> so anyways, now for our meditation. So if you're brand new to meditation, know there's only two simple steps. Relaxation and awareness. So as we meditate together, first sit comfortably. Be at ease. As I like to call it, your perfect position because it's perfect for you. So once you find your perfect position, let's gently close our eyes. Take in a deep breath. Breathe in the cool, calm, relaxing air. And breathe out all your worry, thoughts, and responsibilities. Just let it all go. Forget about it for the time that we are meditating. Just breathe in. Breathe out. Let each breath of fresh air help you become more relaxed, more comfortable. Taking a few more deep breaths as this is a natural and easy way to relax. And let your entire body feel completely relaxed. From the top of your head, down to the tips of your toes. It's as if every muscle in your body becomes light and loose. No aches, no pain. Instead, you feel like you're sitting on a cloud. Everything's just perfect. Very comfortable. And once you relax, we move on to the next step. Consciousness or focus. But it's a light focus. It's not too intense, not too intent. It's light and gentle. What we do is visualize or imagine a meditation object. For example, a shining star like each of you. A beautiful, bright, shining star helping you feel at ease, calm and peaceful. But if you want to choose something else, that's also fine. For example, maybe you like the sunrise, or maybe you like the full moon. 
Or maybe you think of a scoop of ice cream. Or maybe your favorite toy. We let our mind stay with one thing relaxingly and comfortably. You don't have to force yourself to see it. It's kind of like remembering. Like if I ask you to remember your front door, it's usually pretty easy to remember. Or remember what your school looks like. Or maybe the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, the sun. See how it's easy to remember. You don't have to force yourself. That's how we visualize or imagine. It's light and gentle because everything we do in meditation is light and gentle. You don't force, you don't push. Take your time. Just stay with your shining star or meditation object. And as we stay with that one thing, you'll notice you feel lighter and lighter. You might even feel happier, more at peace, feeling safe and warm. Because our meditation object is like a very good friend taking care of us, keeping us safe, especially your mind. Because when your mind is calm and peaceful, you can get through any situation and find the best way to fix it or move past it. Just like if you go from a bright room and run into a dark room, at first your eyes are not able to adjust. Everything is too dark to see. So what do we do? Do we run through the room? No, because you'll probably trip, fall, or hit something. So instead, we just stand still for a while. And little by little, your eyes adjust. And then you start to see the shapes of the things around you and slowly start to see the way to get through the room. Same with our meditation. Don't rush, take your time. Let your mind adjust, just like your eyes adjust in a dark room. And if you're patient and take your time, you'll be able to see very clearly. And you can also use this magic word we call a mantra to help your mind be calm and peaceful. Samma.
peaceful for a little while. Now, let us all take in a deep breath. And very gently and at your own pace, opening your eyes. Take your time as we slowly come back. Take in a few deep breaths. Do a little stretch if you'd like. As we slowly come back. How is everyone feeling? I feel super calm and relaxed. I felt so calm and relaxed that I almost fell asleep. What about you, Thomas? I feel great and at peace. What about you, Hannah? I felt very peaceful, so thank you for the meditation. Well done, everyone. Yeah, as you can see, when we meditate, even though it's only about 10 minutes, it's not that long, but you can find peace and be at ease and be very relaxed again. At the end of meditation, very much, very importantly, notice how you feel. And you'll see how, if you practice like this every day, little by little, you'll be able to keep that peaceful feeling and use it throughout your day. And that peaceful feeling becomes clarity. You know how the adults say, think clearly, <laughs> or think before you act. One thing you have to do also is to let your mind be clear. When your mind's clean, clear, calm, peaceful, just like right now, ah, you're able to really find the best answer for you, no matter what's going on. So I hope you all keep practicing. And of course, remember, make every day your day. Thank you, Venerable Clint, for leading the meditation this evening. Namaskar. Friends, don't forget to meditate as often as you can each week. Your mind appreciates love. And we will see you all again every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook of Kids Love Peace 20. Channel and enjoy your spring break if you haven't had it yet. Don't forget to share the love and give us a like and subscribe below to support our program. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a great week, guys. Till next Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye. 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 Have a great week, guys, from everybody at Kids, Kids Love, love. Peace.
Peace. Peace. 2020. Bye, everyone. Have a Bye, everyone.